I wanted to show you guys a little bit about this solar uh, pond pumping system. It's not new, um, but it's updated. I kind of set this up years ago for pasturing, for, for watering um, cows uh, from a pond. And so that's when I got this Dankoff solar slow pump. And uh, I've just been tweaking the system. It's more complex now because I used to just pump from a pond to another pond. It was just open system, solar direct. It's called when the sun shines, the pump pumps, that's it, into an open system. Now that I'm using it for drip irrigation, because we've had such a drought, it kind of kicked my butt to get drip irrigation going. Um, and I had this equipment mostly, and I want it as a backup to my well irrigation. Plus, it's better to water from a pond than from a well, because it's much better for the plants. It's warm, and the water has nutrients in it. Um, and it's, it's a more sustainable situation than pulling up groundwater. I mean, pulling in groundwater should always be um, kind of the last option in terms of regenerative land management. You should never um, look to pull groundwater first. You should always, always harvest surface water, except for drinking. I think drinking surface, um, drinking rainwater directly, I think, is um, a bad idea, even though some people have to do it. Uh, much better to go through the filter and the mineralizer of the ground. Um, so multiple reasons to get this going. For the most important functions, as we say in permaculture, you need multiple pathways to achieve uh, the most important goals and the most important function systems. Water, of course, is one of them. We're not growing food in the garden without water if it's a very dry year. Even though we mulch and we have good soil and we keep building soil and we compost and, and cover the ground a lot, um, we still need water when it's really dry. So this is mostly done. We have the pump. We have the linear current booster that allows you to pump water when it's cloudy. It's all grounded. I had to add the pressure switch and the pressure tank helps too. Whereas before when it was solar direct, always on, um, you know, it didn't need switching uh, because it would just run. So now it has to turn off and on. So basically I'm gonna turn it on. It's manually off right now. But with the pressure switch, it has a brain and it will turn itself off when the pressure in the system builds up. And um, yeah, so it's working good. I have had to add a few things to just keep track of it. This is a vacuum gauge, measures positive and negative pressure. But um, that will allow me to know when I'm changing my filter. The filter's in here. That's just a regular filter unit. It's five micron. It probably could be 10 or 15, I'm told by the techs at Dankoff. Um, but uh, this is a pain to change and you're on the intake part of the system. So uh, it's not, you don't want to mess with it. You have to fill it here and prime it. It's kind of a pain. So I want to limit changing this filter. There's a foot valve at the bottom where this comes in from the pond. You want the lift. This is the lift side of the pump. This is the, the pump, the output side, the push. Pumps like to push. You don't want the lift much. The less, the better. If you can mount it below a pond and have the pipe go through the pond berm, even better. Have zero lift. This will only lift to 20 feet max, no matter what. Um, but this pump can push hundreds of vertical feet and generate a lot of PSI, like I think 75. Um, so you know, that's its production. You, know, you see it's got plenty of push. This goes up about only about 15 vert to the garden where I have maybe up to a thousand feet of drip line out. So if someone up in the garden now turned off the drip, the pump would trigger the tr pressure switch because the pressure would go up and they would turn off. And, um, and I just want to show you one other part of the system, which is kind of a tweak, uh, which I like a lot is I have the one and a half inch PVC coming in here and I ran it into a, um, a uh, 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 there's a Felco Fernco fitting here. So I can take this off in the winter very easily with just a 5 16 bit. It goes into a bucket that I hole sawed through and it captures the bucket tightly. Um, the foot valve threads do. There's a foot valve in there, which is a one-way check valve, keep the prime from water from going back out. And then I put for like five bucks, this is eight bucks stainless steel. It's like 200 micron mesh over the outside. And then there's a five micron bag filter in there, which has a lot of surface area that goes like this. So this is very easy to change easier than the other one. So I can reach over here off the dock, 
flip this nice big hose hose clamp, take this off, literally just kind of like clean it off in the pond or take it to the, well, you know, to the house, but I, it, this is fine. And then put it back on. And that's just gonna make the other filter last a lot longer. Um, this thing's kind of heavy, so it's supported here. Um, and the whole thing with just a, a, a screw gun, I can take the critical parts of it in for the winter. So that's how we're pumping water from the pond. Um, nutrient rich, nice warm water. So we're not free, you know, just totally chilling the uh, soil food web. A lot of greenhouse growers are very aware of how just dousing, you know, the soil profile with 45, 50 degree well water just totally slows down the biology. So it really ultimately reduces plant performance and, um, you know, biological performance. Okay, so now we're back up at the garden. This thing's running. We're gonna do some irrigation and fertilization. So you can see the drip is running in the greenhouse. So I'm gonna turn off uh, the greenhouse zone because I don't need it on right now. And I'm going to fill, this is all urine from the last few days. I'm gonna turn that on, turn off the drip. I'm going to fill this with some water. And, um, you know, this is the output of the pump right now. It's pretty early in the morning, like nine o'clock, um, probably about two gallons a minute. Um, it will get up to three and a half gallons or so. In the other shot, the pressure tank was actually still being charged. This is much more of a typical, partly sunny flow before noon, uh, midday, uh, which is plenty. And um, no batteries, which is awesome, Solar Direct. So I'm gonna get a bunch of water in here. And um, this, is, this is the dongle, which is nice to have to fill. Three-way ball valves are awesome. They eliminate um, a bunch of other ball valves and make things kind of more automatic. The video I just posted earlier shows this a little more, this setup, but it's just trying to be as clean as possible. Um, and then it has the Mazzy fertilizer injector, which I'm going to run right now. So I'm going to put this in here and this is going to suck in the nice fertilized water. And it's going to send it to the drip here in a second. Um, I'm not going to go into how this is all set up, but basically it's just the simplest way I could figure out after a few versions of keeping this, um, of achieving the goals here that I want to. So I'm on pond, opening the drip system, opening the fertilizer injector, closing this. So now FERT is on. You can see we're running. See that? You can see the you can see the rate that it's flowing in. So now we're we're sending food out to the garden, and I want to actually fertilize this zone, these zones in particular, two zones in particular, which are the fall kohlrabi, and I want to turn off other ones. I only want to feed. Uh, that's the potatoes. I'm done feeding the potatoes. Done feeding this perennial bed um that's done for the year i mean you know this late in the year the squash this is the squash zone i don't need to feed that anymore um this late in the year we really are only feeding very selective things so this is what i want on i want to pump the fall kohlrabi that one's already on these carrots are doing fine i don't think they need any more nitrogen everything else is fine I'm gonna turn this side of the greenhouse off. I found that the 100 foot of drip soaker from Dripworks, which is where I get a lot of this stuff, doesn't fill very well from one end. So you gotta pump, pump it in from both ends. So that's that. springs graphs i don't have to take that tape off it comes off by itself but just to i check on them 
this time of year and a little while ago too, to um, just to see how they're doing and also to prune back any competing uh, leaders once they um, take. So this probably has six nice fresh eating insider varieties on it and keeping varieties. It's all about the keepers.